All right, we're working in section 4.2 with linear regression, and now we're going to figure out how to find this crazy equation, um, that best fitting line with the least amount of error. So it looks like a linear equation that we already defined, um, but how do we find those coefficients, the b0 and the b1? Um, it's a very, very, very ugly formula, but the slope is like this weird, we're calculating the differences between the mean and for the x's and the y's, and then b0 is some complicated formula. Um, but don't worry, um, the technology will do it for you. If anyone has taken calculus, it, it's, a, it's an optimization problem with minimizing the sum of the square errors that we talked about last video, um, but our calculator will do it for us. It's not worth the effort to do this by hand. Um, and just a fun fact, um, the least possible, the line with the least possible error will always have the average. X bar, Y bar will always be in the line. Um, so let's go ahead and do linear regression um, for the one we just, the example we previously did, and figure out the regression equation. So let's go ahead and enter the data into L1 and L2. So you go to stat, edit, those menus we've been using a lot. We used this in previous chapters as well. And then L1 will be my x's. And L2 will be my y's. Um, if you have any data in there, you can go to the very, very top, clear, enter. Do not hit delete. Clear, enter. So L1, I'm just going to go ahead and input the y, x values in order. Order does matter here. And the corresponding y values. So there's only four and four. So we have two lists, and then you're gonna to go to stat. You're gonna go over to calculate. We've been to this menu a lot. Um, and then you might see linear regression as number four on yours. The numbers are slightly different on mine, um, but on your calculator, it's probably number eight. We're actually gonna skip four because it's like the opposite order and jump down to eight. Um, and you'll notice the only difference is the order, ax plus b or a plus bx. And we're just writing everything in that second order. So go down to 8. And then it's going to look like this on your calculator, L1 comma L2. So L1 is at the bottom. Um, commas right here. Above the 7, L2. Enter. And it gives you some information. If it gives you some more information, the r and r squared, ignore those for now. Um, we'll come back to that later. So we see y equals a plus bx on our calculator, a equals negative 0.25, b equals 1.5. So then our equation will be y hat, negative 0.25, plus 1.5, and then don't forget the x. I see people often forget the x. And so the calculator minimized the error for us. It did all these crazy calculations to minimize that for us. And this is our linear regression equation. Um, so linear regression, before we keep going, should only be done if the data, um, the scattergram, is at least roughly linear. Um, right, so something like this, right, where it's kind of a line versus just points all over the place. This is not roughly linear, right? So it has to be kind of a line. Otherwise, we shouldn't even bother doing linear regression. Cool. So let me know if you have calculator issues before you keep going. Um, otherwise, let's go back to that cricket example. So um, we talked about how crickets chirp faster when the weather is warm. And x was the degrees, and then y was the chirps. So let's go ahead and find the regression equation. So we're going to go back to our calculator. This is going to take a while to type stat edit. And I'm going to try to type as fast as possible. Pause if you need a bunch of time. But make sure you get all those x values in there. So x is L1. They need to be in order because they pair with y values. Hopefully I got them all. So L1 is X, L2 is Y. So you can just type over or you can clear the list. It 
Double check for typos. Easy to make a small mistake. If you need a little bit more time to type, right? I'm doing this really fast because I do this probably more often than you. Um, oops, hit pause and then just hit play when your list is ready. But there should be 15 data values. I think there's 15 points. And then we're gonna go back to that same menu. We're gonna go to stat, calculate. And then you're gonna go over to the eighth one down, which is linear regression. Um, a plus BX. And then you're going to tell the calculator to look at L1, L2. That's how you're telling the calculator where to look. Where is my data? It's in L1 and L2. And I got A equals, I'm going to put a ton of decimal places. Ah, I lost the calculator, of course. Um, we'll talk about rounding. You'll see below I'm going to do rounding. So we're just going to do a bunch of decimal places right now. I'm just going to keep everything for the time being. If you got these numbers but backwards, that means you probably chose the opposite menu. So we're going to say y hat equals 0.4593, I know, 52, plus point. 202999. I'm leaving everything because I want to talk about rounding in a second. And then don't forget the X. People often forget the X. So let's talk about how we round. And then we'll make this equation look nicer. So for rounding, the tricky part is the Y intercept and the slope have different rules. Um, so for the Y intercept, you need one more decimal place in B0 or the Y intercept than you want in your predictions. So what does that mean? So let's look at a prediction. Remember the y values are predictions, they're responses, um, they're the results. So my y values seem to have like one decimal place for the most part. Do we see that? I'm looking at these ones. The y values have one decimal place. So that means I need one more. So that means I need two decimal place. And that's for the y-intercept. So one more decimal place. So this is my y-intercept. This would be one decimal place. So this would be two decimal places. So I need to go to at least the four or five. You can always have more, right? At least, um, these are all at least, these are minimums. The slope is different, so don't round the slope yet. The rule for slope is you need one more digit. And so that's where everyone gets confused. So these are my current Y values. They have one decimal place, maybe zero, but one would be more. And then they have like two to three digits. So we'll say they have three digits. Right, one, two, three. So that means I need how many digits? One more would be four digits. And so that's for the slope. So we need four digits. The zero in front doesn't count, one, two, three, four. So two decimal places for the y-intercept. So that's the tricky part, is the y-intercept is using decimal places, the slope is using digits, four digits. And I'm getting the cutoff based on the data values in the table, the y values specifically. So if we want to round this, we'll say y hat, maybe squiggly lines for rounding is 0.4, and then that rounds up to six because of the nine, plus 0 0.202. And then if we add one, that actually rounds up to 30x. So that would be a rounded form. You can always have more. So a lot of students have decided they hate these rounding rules and they usually just keep a bunch like this. But some of us might be overwhelmed by all those digits and so this is how we round. 
So let's just interpret the slope and y-intercept and then we'll check out another example. So my slope was the point two th zero three two zero three zero over one. So it's change in y over change in x. And then y in this example was chirps per second. And then I think x was degrees. So the x's are increasing by 1 degrees for every 1 degree Fahrenheit. Chirps per second increases by 0 0.2030. It's kind of weird because it's chirps per second, but it works. So for each additional degree Fahrenheit, that's the units for temperature, um, chirps per second increases by that decimal. And that's like chirps. So the number of times they chirp or make a noise. Cool. And then y-intercept we haven't done yet, but y-intercept was the 0.46. Um, the way we inter um, interpret it is it's basically when x equals 0, right? If I got rid of this, we would get 0.46. So it's always the point 0, comma, y-intercept. And so 0 would be temperature for x. And this is chirps, y equals chirps. So basically, this is telling us um, I'm going to say according to the equation because it might not be true. Um, but the equation predicts that at zero degrees Fahrenheit, a cricket chirps 0.46 times per second. And I am saying according to the equation because I don't think crickets are actually alive at zero degrees. Um, right? Our data was in the 80s and 90s and 70s. So it turns out zero degrees doesn't make sense, but we'll see that in the next video. But according to the equation, if it were zero degrees Fahrenheit, a cricket would chirp 0.46 times per second. And the y-intercept is always when x is zero. So this part won't change. Um, yeah, so I'll see you in the next video. We'll um, graph it in the next video, the chirps.